<laughs> okay, so here on Confounded TV today, we have Peter Crawford and Dan Blatchford from Sip Champagnes. Welcome to Confounded TV, guys. Thanks very much. Thanks. And you Thanks guys... That's no problem. And you guys have a really interesting proposition. You have gone out to uh, France or have been for a while, and you have some amazing stats about how little of the different brands we actually know about in the UK. And your mission, I believe, is to build a website where I can actually go and discover smaller growers, smaller brands, and actually find some of the better champagnes. And you're going to effectively democratize that and make it easy for everyone to find. Yeah, exactly. It's um, it, it, you said it better than I could possibly could. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I've been traveling over for the last twenty years, uh, doing exactly that, trying to just pick up these little producers that that we don't already have in the UK shores, and there are thousands of them. There's sixteen thousand growers in the region, and in the UK now we only see roughly one hundred and ninety of them. That's so amazing. So it's a tiny, tiny fraction, and those one hundred and ninety only represent two percent or less than two percent of the total sales. So it's, they're not being given enough space on our. I won't say supermarket shelves because that's where I, do, I don't want them to see. I don't want people to see them there, but they're not getting enough um, vision basically on the UK yeah. market. We want to try and give that vision, give the give the opportunity for consumers, lovers of wine, and other people who who want who wanted the opportunity to try them. So. But the, the numbers seem to be off the scale. I mean, you're talking thousands and thousands and thousands of growers and different yes. brands, which we don't even wouldn't even recognise the name of. I mean, thousands of them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what's so important about the region is the way it's been brought up over the last few centuries and how it's relied on the big growers that you know of, the Moets, the Verves, the Bollangers. Those, those, um, those are the core component of what Champagne represents. And they're, they are massive, obviously. They're, they're absolutely massive. And they, they run off the back of buying off those small producers. So okay. it's much easier, especially, and I don't want to get into a, a bitching match with with mh because i don't want to do that <laughs> but yeah. it's much easier for these producers to survive selling grapes or selling juice to the likes of moat hennessy or uh, okay. Bollinger or, or others so what's happened in the last few years and sadly we've seen the decline of it um, in the last probably decade as a whole is we've seen more and more producers come up that are really exciting and you you may not have heard of them but Producers like Pierre Peters, Selos, Baresh, these are really fantastic small producers that are on the UK market that are super good wines and incredible wines, but they're a, a small fraction of what we could see. And I think what I'd like to see and what we want to try and do with SIP is bring on lots more producers and show what incredible wines they do make. And that's, that's what I'm trying to achieve. That's fantastic. I mean, it's, I think the idea that there are all these people out there who, who could be um, if, if you know, if one takes off, you will change their lives. Absolutely, and that, and that's I, I really do. You know, every time I look at the list, and I've gone, with, you know, Dan and I have sat down many, many times looking at these lists of the producers that, that I want to bring across, and there are more and more and more that I want to bring across. Every time I look at them, I look at the list and go, "This, these wines are amazing wines. These should be in front of people. These should be in restaurants. These should be everywhere." Um, and I do think. Give people the opportunity to try them. I'm not, I'm not trying to change people's palates or to change people's minds. If they if they like going out and they like buying Vodka Pico, that's absolutely fine. But this is something different. This is a small producer. This guy is on a tractor on a Friday nice. night, yeah. you know, plowing the, the vines. He's out there doing his his thing. He and she, there are many, many female winemakers as well. They're out there making their wines. Yeah. And that's what's important to me, getting they, them a voice. That's what's Proper really craft, important. Proper as you might say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and sorry, Dan, I was just going to say, and so your, your job, Dan, is to actually, A, uh, build somewhere where, um, at, which you've almost finished, I believe, where we can actually go and, and read um, all about the different, wi uh, different wines and buy and subscribe or have tasting. What's the, what's the model going to be for the, for the website? Exactly that, yeah. Um, uh, a bit of a hybrid uh, model, really. So we, we really want you to, um, to ultimately subscribe and let us introduce you to these, these incredible champagnes that we're, that we're finding and bringing to the UK. Um, uh, but we will have a, a sort of an open bottle shop as well for you to browse and, and purchase. So we'll, we'll we'll slice those up and position them in the in the right way so they're easy to find. Whether they're uh, particular vintages or, or um, whether they're say the, the 
the um, what we're calling the SIP collection, which are... I've seen that on Instagram. We, You've already got me pegged on Instagram with your adverts. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, 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 they, they just represent like the... the some of the the best bottles out there at the moment that we've come across that the the farmers the producers are really doing something extraordinary um and we 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 think they just need to be known about but like they're, they're like everyone should know about this this yeah you guys i, I love guys with a passion and a zeal like you're going to change the world right um, <laughs> at least you, but it, you know it, it does i think it's fantastic there's far too many businesses one of the reasons i started this podcast there's too many businesses who just literally you know cut and paste the mckinsey oh. startup business plan and go and everything is just transactional and it's so boring right it's just <laughs> so so boring if there's no passion there's no love then i just don't know what you're doing it for apart from like that. I mean, that that's that's exactly it like we, and part of the reason where we we were hoping to have launched by now and we're we're very close we're no more than a week or two really to to properly yeah, open bear in mind this might be live in two weeks okay <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like because we are we are going back to the, the, the farmers who and they are farmers they're, they're not used to doing something like this they're not used to yeah. um, uh, say to working with a, with a startup who we're, we're trying to um, we're trying to sell their product which means we need to pick it up from certain locations we need to package that ship it, ship it across and it's, it's it's all it's all complexity that we we've had to work out because no one else is doing this I was gonna say my next question to you both was the logistics around this sound yeah. horrible <laughs> uh, the, 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 I, I can't I can't explain it uh, enough Alistair, because the, the problem we're having is that the French and don't get me wrong I love the French but when it comes to this type of thing they are problematic at best and um, what we're fighting against now whenever you do go live with this what we're fighting with now is is august the whole month of august yeah, everybody's on holiday, holiday. Yeah. <laughs> so, it doesn't matter whether you order of five pallets it will not arrive until september the earliest so <laughs> although interestingly if you drive through that part of france and you happen to stop at a chateau they will open the door give you a tasting and then sell you a whole case of course. <laughs> yeah. So there, if you if you rock up with the euros in your pocket to buy it, they'll definitely be there. Yeah. Quite. But I mean, even if you just start, I mean, I don't know how many how many brands are you going to like have on the website when you go live. We've we've got we've got about twenty five producers, and um, what's very important that I try to get from the producers, which is unique in the in the world of of trading with wine, is and this is no, I, I'm not being awful to the producers and saying this, I don't want to work with just their standard wines. And I'm not suggesting that their standard wines aren't good. I want unique individual wines, these, these wines okay. that, that stop you and go, wow, that's different. It doesn't have to be their prestige wine or their, it doesn't have to be a single vintage, but something that makes you stop and think. So I've gone to producers, I've picked out their one or two best wines, and that's what we're working with. So we've got about 45 50 wines to work with to start off with and as I say we'll be bringing more and more wines in as as we develop uh, and we will be shelving wines because I hope what, what would be absolutely fantastic is that some of these producers can springboard off the back yes. of us yeah. and and develop more in the UK market I, I, I don't want to hold on to producers uh, and, and hold them back I want to keep working with their wines and get them into restaurants get them into the on trade and develop their relationship with with the UK which is really important for me so the, so are you bringing um, are you actually bringing all that wine here and then having it bonded warehouse or whatever and then selling it or are you waiting exactly. till the order? so you are actually going to have stock in the you you got to actually go and get it all buy it all bring it all over here yes yeah. because you need a bonded warehouse and all that jazz yes yeah. and then, um, and then you sell it on the website, and then you ship it from there. Yes, exactly. It's actually, it's actually yeah. a fairly significant undertaking. This. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and some, some of these, like we, we've had to actually create, generate um, unique uh, SK, SKUs, you know, SKU codes for, yeah. for because they've never they've never made it to the UK before. So like the. We, that, that even that took a, quite a bit of back and forth just to get these these unique codes generated um, so that we could I think track. That's, that's fantastic. Those you know the, the, to bring to bring that over, create you know SKUs for them, actually have a warehouse, actually be doing all the work, and then saying you know if we make this work for you, we're not going to hold you you know contractually. You can only sell through us. We want you to be successful. And I guess you've got because you've, you've got plenty of choice because there's another ten thousand out there to help. <laughs> no, exactly. Look, the, the joy for me is is bringing them onto the market. We we obviously want to have we we want the producers to work with us individually 
start off with because that, that's that's the only way we can create our, our USP, which is bringing over unique uh, and individual yeah. champagne. But I, I've got the relationships. I've got the people I know where um, I'm already working with another another five producers to bring them in what well, post post our, our launch to, to get them as the first wave to come in after launch. So I, I've already got those lined up and I'll be going over in both August and September to develop more relationships for the next five from, from there as well. So there, there's, there's, there are so many more. And, and the, the types of producers we're working with, there, there, there are a couple, there are, you know, I would say 10, 15% that are, are quite frankly too big for us in a sense. We will okay. we'll bring them in. And then we'll have to ship them on because we won't be able to engage with them long term because their numbers will be up in the tens of thousands of bottles that they want to ship. Um, but I want to keep the relationship, nurture that relationship, and that will no doubt bring us more wines in the future. Um, so you've got you've got the two sides. You've got two sides of this. Um, you've got the restaurants and the trade, um, obviously, which is a key thing for I, I guess. I, 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 well, you can tell me if I'm right or wrong here. It feels to me like that would be the volume, and then you've got the consumers. But if you get the consumer play right with the website and you get your marketing right, that, that could be the volume. So there's, you've got double-sided, two audiences here. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And those are, those are definitely, we, we can all learn from COVID a little bit with that. The, having, a, having a finger in each pie is very important. because the Yes, because if the restaurants the are shut for another, in September for another yeah. three months, you're going to need that consumer space. Absolutely, and 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 I've been on the phone with with with, with Champagne as a whole. Lots of CEOs from various um, Champagne houses, bigger, much bigger Champagne houses than we're dealing with, and it's just been catastrophic in Champagne. Sales are down twenty, thirty percent uh, at least. So it, it's vast, wow. vast ways of, of Champagne are, are just sitting in bonded accounts, just waiting for something to happen. That's amazing, isn't it? And yeah. that, is that is that because the restaurants are shut or because people aren't buying it? I, I think a bit of both, to be honest. Um, yeah. And and I I can't. The problem with champagne, and this is what we want to try and change, is is it is so linked up to the thought of celebration and and something special, and all of that has been taken away by COVID. Yes. So yeah. not just the on trade restaurants, etc., bars, but also the idea of celebration through birthday parties and where you bring people together it's just gone so there's no reason to open a bottle of champagne and what we want to try and do is with sip and i hope we can do that is translate that champagne is more than that it can be something you open yes of course you can open it to celebrate a birthday or a anniversary or something like that or whatever it may be for you but it, it, champagne for me is about something you enjoy with food or something you enjoy on your own which i do quite often <laughs> just sit that, and that, that, that's, that's going to sound all wrong <laughs> it's, Peter Crawford, the man who drinks champagne by himself. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but you're quite it's right. Of, when it's I was, one of those, go on, sorry. So when I was a small boy, um, my dad, um, he worked really, really hard, and they'd have a bottle on a Friday night, not to celebrate anything, just because, thank God, it's Friday. Yeah. Right. And that, and but, that, I think that was it for the night. It wasn't like <laughs> that, then, a, then another bottle of red, then another bottle of white like our generation did. It was literally that, that was it, you know. Um, yeah. We, but I think that what's what's happened in the last couple of decades with champagne is it's returning to its roots a little bit. And champagne used to be vinified in oak. It used to be vinified with a cork. And these processes bring about what's called microoxidation and a number, a number of other factors, which I won't get into today. But uh, And what those bring to your glass, especially if you don't have it in a flute, but you have it in a, in a red or white wine glass, is structure that people don't expect from champagne. Yeah. So when you open your bottle of Merlot Brut Imperial, you get a, and I'm, I really do respect uh, the winemaker Ben Lagueur's uh, for Merlot, you get a consistent sparkling wine that is exactly what you expect from a bottle of Merlot. Yeah, it smells it's, the same, tastes the same, it's consistency exactly. is key. Right? Consistency is phenomenal. When you look at their figures, it's... I was going to say it's McDonald's or champagne, but that's not very polite. No, no, it, no and, and, but, I, I but really the, do... But the system's the same, right? Exactly. It's a systematic thing. It's that you get the same thing. You can you can take it something for a present. I haven't bought you something you're not yeah. going to like. You know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Exactly. So what what I want to do and what Dan and I hope to achieve from SIP is to is to give people the opportunity to try something that is genuinely unique. Many of these producers that we're bringing over produce six, seven, eight hundred bottles total, wow. total product. So you, when you try a wine from the, the this, one of these producers, you are trying something that's been vinified in one or maybe two oak barrels, uh, and and you're getting something that is very unique in, in flavor profile that 
next year will not be the same. That is amazing. So if I get something I really like, there's a chance I may never get to taste anything like it again. Uh, which is why you can obviously go on to, onto the website and buy six bottles. And buy, and buy the, whole, the rest of the case. Yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> well, why not? It makes perfect. Because I think the other thing is there must be, um, well, there are, I know some of them. There, there are people who actually, you know, lay down wine. And, I mean, yes. it doesn't necessarily need to be that expensive, but they know enough to choose some reds and, and lay them down. And actually, I don't think I've ever seen a bottle of champagne in one of their houses. You know, so you've, you've got the chance to say, this is a wine like others, where you actually, if you know what you're buying and you like, like you find the one you like, you can actually buy five and just keep it, um, yes. because it will it won't come round again. Because there was a there was a whiskey I bought, which I've the name has completely escaped me. At Rosebank, and I, I was, yes. first, was first given it was about twenty five quid or something, and then I drank all it was great. And I, actually, there's only whiskey I really liked. I bought another one. This time it was fifty quid. And me being, yeah. I didn't go. What I should do is buy ten bottles. And now. If, because I didn't realize uh, Rosebank had shut. Now, if you want to buy the same 12-year-old bottle, it's 850 <laughs> quid. Now, of course, I ain't drinking any Rosebank unless you know, some, somebody happens to drop it on my doorstep. And I guess this is the same principle, right? You're going to find something from a small producer which is really, really special, and it ain't coming back. Yeah, exactly. And, and that has happened in the champagne market, but only really at the upper end of the prestige cuvées. Okay. Um, I do think there is an opportunity. We see it with a very few small producers or growers in the region. But I think there's definitely an opportunity with, with a number of these wines where you lay it down, you enjoy it over a period of five, ten years, depending on what your palate likes. I, I love old champagnes. Some people don't, so oh, I understand. I, I, wish I, I wish I knew the difference. We're going to have to do a tasting <laughs> session, right? Because I, no, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> like old champagne, what, like, like it's been in the cupboard open for 20 years. What does that mean? <laughs> I'm such a no, champagne heathen. This is going to be a really interesting journey watching you guys. Absolutely. But it, it, it's well worth doing and, and something that I think we can, we can help people understand a little bit more. So assuming you've got, you know, so you, you'll have a marketing strategy to get people to the website. You've got a bit of education to do, obviously, because you know what you're explaining to me just now is it's, it's, it's straightforward, but it needs, uh, I presume you'll have video stuff on the website. How do you actually get, have you got any like uh, real world consumer experiences planned, like tasting or, you know, um, even just video tasting? There's another unnamed wine company who I won't, I won't promote here. But, um, I saw uh, they do a, a drinks evening with a winemaker. And it's quite well, I think 5,000 people attended the webinar I saw. Gosh. And she said the next day she sold her entire year and within yeah. three hours of that finishing. So that seems like a great way to engage people. They don't necessarily buy it and taste it there and then, but you get the producer on, you talk to them, it's interesting. And actually, yeah. you can start that in small. You don't need 5,000 people, you know, 50 people yeah. would be interesting. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think that's, again, COVID has delivered us a very yeah. open set for exactly that. And for the last three, four, five months, I've been doing these IG live sessions with a number of, of uh, winemakers. And you can, they you can promote that, by the way. If you, want to, if you want to drop your name in there, you can... You, uh, my, my handle is Alavole, if you can spell it. It's A-L-A-V-O-L-E-E. -E. Okay, and I'll, I'll stick that in the show notes as well for people. <laughs> exactly. So I, I've been doing a number of these with, with the winemakers, and I, I very much intend to develop that concept onto the SIP uh, specifically the SIP subscription model, because I think it works really nicely. You get your case, and with that case, you get the opportunity to have a sit-down with the winemaker with all the other SIP um, subscribers, and you can talk about the wine with the winemaker there, and we'll bring them out on. A number of the issues we have with the winemakers, I, I must say at this point, is because they're so fresh to the market, a number of them don't speak English, which, yeah. is, which is something we'll need to work on. So it'll be either with the winemaker or with, with myself. Running, running the, the the webinar with with uh, perhaps with a winemaker in the background, but <laughs> it's exactly what we want to try and achieve, um, because it's 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 definitely the best way to understand and and get to grips with what the wine is bringing. I think sometimes with any wine making, white wine tasting, it's quite hard to see beyond the glass and what's going on. And if you're talking yeah. to the the winemaker, you're talking to the person who's working those vineyards, you can get a little bit more of a flavour of what they're trying to achieve. I think also people um, drive past this stuff in France and don't really realize. We stayed once in a house where it was owned by, um, it, was a, it was a tiny vineyard. I think it was like, I don't know, seven acres, nine acres. I mean, it really wasn't an awful lot. Made a few bottles. And um, I remember being at three o'clock one afternoon sitting in the, in, we sort of rented their converted barn. There's a pool and everything. Very nice. The kids are jumping in the pool. I'm sitting at the edge. 
And I watched him break his back going up yes. in that vineyard in 40 degrees heat in the middle of August. And I thought, that's yeah. actually really, there's some real love and sweat and tears goes into that, pro, into that, um, into the production, isn't there? Absolutely. And, and, and it is proper back breaking work because mm, it definitely. is on, on hills. It, it's all, and that's the beauty of Champagne. It's on these beautiful, you know, it's east, southeast facing vineyards. And they're all, they're, they're, I mean, I've, I've been one of the producers who I'm bringing on later on has, I think the highest, uh, angle uh, vineyard of something like 38 percent, 38 degrees which is just, wow. I, I, just I don't know how they work it I really don't <laughs> it's absolutely phenomenal it is and so Dan how does the subscription model work I mean because the website's almost there just about to go go live or will be long yeah. time to produce this what, what are the, what are my options as a subscriber yeah so we're we're launching with with three tiers of subscription um, uh, we're, we're basing around, um, free price points where we'll deliver, um, a range of, of unique bottles, um, to the subscribers each month. So, um, starting at around two to three, uh, sorry, one to two bottles. Let me say that again, starting at one to two bottles yeah. uh, and then getting up to the, the maximum amount, which is um, up to around about nine bottles a month. Okay. So what you're saying here is this is not just like, um, my uh, majestic delivery, which I sort of plow through every month and just get the the next the next case in. This is actually because I might drink one, keep one. Yeah, yeah I'm, it, not it, it, be, I'm not supposed to be drinking all this just because it's just sitting in my house, right? <laughs> no, no, it, it, there's certainly that in there. Like, like Peter touched on, um, there will be uh, a sit down, um, likely mostly a video chat to begin with. Um, so with with either Peter and or the, the producers themselves, um, we'll include a little bit of information in in the um, in the subscription. So you can find out about the producers, um, how they're working the land, and the, the the tasting notes for the bottles. So um, trying to trying to really sort of promote these these farmers, these producers, and uh, why why you why you should sort of trust us to sort of package these up. So. Although there won't initially be any uh, um, choice to select the the exact bottles that you get, and um, we we want to surprise you with these unique bottles. So we, Brave. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's, um, that's beautiful. We'll, we'll just tell you what's right for you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, look, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll I, know, I think this. I actually think you're quite right. I think it's is bang on trend um, because the other thing I think you've got going through right now is. I think the being at home thing, and I don't know if you've seen the, there was some stats out uh, day before yesterday um, that uh, on Google Shopping type searches, um, quality is now um, a bigger search than price. So weirdly, we're all at home. I don't know what the nine million people in furlough are doing, but I presume they're saying actually I don't want to buy more cheap shit. Right? I'm actually going to buy something nice because I'm going to have to use it every day or whatever. Whatever this reason is, people are now seeing quality, and I think that's probably a, maybe a combination of. Let's not be frivolous with our money. Let's buy stuff that lasts a bit longer, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, I think that other thing that's happening that you, 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 perfect timing is the sort of the rise of all the more niche products, which are better quality. And even if they have a smaller audience, that audience, there's a guy on LinkedIn, you must have seen him. Is it Simon Bourne, the handmade shoe company guy who went on to link onto Dragon's Den? Right. He's got that huge audience in, on LinkedIn because it's just him doing something and trying to do it really well. And people emote and, and feel more connected to their products. So if you guys are saying, here is something we recommend and we've talked, I mean, the videos, are, I mean, are you going to do stuff like videos with the actual producer when you can go back videos with the producers? Because that'd be fascinating yeah. to actually see the vineyard and the process and the family and where they make it. Would yeah. Be yeah, that, that's exactly absolutely our plans too. So um, August and September, as, as Peter mentioned, we're planning to, to be out there. Uh, assuming we can travel uh, and the restrictions aren't in place or we in place. I hope, I hope they're not. I bought my Euroton. I'll take it to go and hold it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like that, that's, that's absolutely our plan. Um, video content, interviews with the interviews with the producers, um, uh, and sort of just get, trying to introduce the, the roots of these bottles, these, these champagnes. Yeah, personalizing um, it, personalizing it and making it, you know, like you're there and you're creating the brand around around sip and why but i think if you can bring in the producers and you know actually yeah. make it real like that man there and his family make this champagne we can tell you it's fantastic you know i think that's really really powerful yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you gotta you gotta 
um, bear in mind as well that the uh, so generational uh, generation wise. So we we have like the millennial generation now is the um, uh, is the the largest or has the largest spending power of any generation in the UK. Um, it, I think it's I think it's from this year onwards they they sort of shifted into that into that phase, um, and. And, and I, I'm an older millennial, um, but look, we're often, we're often something different. Like, there, there's Are you sure, Dan? <laughs> right? You need to get better lights. We can't tell from here that you're sitting <laughs> millennial. <laughs> For people listening to the podcast, Dan's sitting in the dark, and we can't tell if he's 20 or 50. <laughs> I will get that light for next time. But look, um, we there were there were some interesting concepts, uh, wine bars, not necessarily champagne bars, but popping up in in East London pre-COVID. Who mm-hmm. like, starting to tap into that 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 market for um, for not wanting the norm, not wanting these established brands, something unique. It's personal. Yeah. It's different. It's 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 sort of getting back to those roots and. Um, and, that, and that's why we, we feel that like now is, is so important. It just like there's, the, the, it feels like the right time to be doing it, and the data shows us it's the right time to be doing it. Like the, the numbers speak for themselves. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an exciting time. So, but you do have you do have a, a massive slump in champagne sales across the board, right? Consumer and uh, uh, on premise and stuff. So you do have a a bit of a mountain in terms of is that because people aren't going out and and. and or you were saying either the link to celebration, or is it is it financial? Like I'm not going to spend that money on this just now. Yeah, there, there certainly was. Uh, sorry, I was going to say there, there certainly was um, uh, going to uh, and for for uh, if we we can safely say the majority of of the lockdown uh, and so on. Um, there was some interesting data released yesterday uh, around alcohol generally. So sales have rebounded. Uh, quite significantly um, over the last month or so. Um, we uh, is that, sorry, is that champagne or all alcohol? That's quite interesting. That, that, was, that was generally all alcohol. How do um, so really, it's, it's just me. Now. I thought it was. I thought everyone was drinking every day the first few weeks. <laughs> was it? Was it just me? <laughs> everyone seems to be. On, everyone seems to be on Zoom every Friday night, completely half cut. <laughs> We we also have the so the numbers from the beginning of this year. So just just before um, the the COVID crisis, the, the the sales by volume in Champagne had come down slightly. Um, and I forget the exact percentage off the top of my head um, um, uh, over the last twelve months. But interestingly, the the um, the pricing, so uh, these the it's sales like of beverage price per bottle. That was the the, the word yeah. I was looking for. Um, had had increased quite significantly. So, um, although although the the, the so, and and splitting that by the say the, the large houses and the grower producers, uh, you, you see a massive imbalance, and and that's where and that's where we see this opportunity. Yeah, I think so. I think that definitely in the more unique element is the is the key here, isn't it? It's not just a, another bottle of the same stuff. I mean, as you said, yeah. you know, no disparaging the fact that it's incredibly popular and the big names that we bought will, will, still, be, will still be the, the, the thing that everybody thinks about. I think that yeah. uniqueness yeah. is definitely on point right now. Yes, absolutely. It's interesting, you know, people worry about um, retail because all we hear about is retail, retail, retail. And obviously, I do a bit of work for um, Red Brain. In fact, I've just interviewed somebody for them. And um, of course, you try and buy a mountain bike, right? You try and buy any bicycle on any of the big names, uh-uh. like chain reactions, you can go and find a popular size mountain bike for about a grand, right? This is not, so there's not cheap bikes for, you know, chucking around the garden. Um, and it'll be out of stock until June, uh, January, 2021, right? <laughs> so, and this is across the board and, and there's so many, I don't, I don't think you still can't get one, but you couldn't get an Oculus Rift. That's a 500 pound toy, you know, and stuff is still selling out. So, you know, money is being spent. It's just being reallocated, I think, in some cases to, well, the bike's more useful than a new car, or I'd rather have a, a case of nice champagne from a, a little grower that I've, I've seen a video about and actually just go and go to a, a big brand and just buy something because for the sake of it. Yeah. So I think yeah. That, that is on point. So how? So here's the, here's the tough question. West, w- website goes live in two weeks, maybe live on the day we produce this week. I may even time it so it's the same thing to help you guys along. <laughs> um with my 50 subscribers obviously they'll all, they'll, 
if you're all listening, you should all buy a bottle of sipchampagnes.com. Um, what is your go-to market strategy for the website? Because obviously you've got a lot of noise to get cut through and you know, you've got to get that positioning out there. Yeah, I, I, I can talk a little bit about that. Um, so we, we, we have essentially five pillars to, to market, um, which we've defined. So one is, uh, one is going to be referrals. So we, we, we are increasingly talking to, um, uh, you mentioned it earlier, the Alavale audience. Uh, we're producing content there. We're uh, introducing and interviewing um, the producers themselves uh, and, and sort of referring through to SIP. Uh, so we're starting to build that momentum um, over the next, uh, well, we have been over the last couple of weeks and, and building that over the next couple of weeks or so. Um, we, we're uh, launching with affiliate uh, and affiliate network. Cool. Um, so that's that's coming together at the moment. Um, we have the, uh, we have PVC campaign. So that's going to be across um, uh, obviously AdWords and, and, and uh, and Bing, but also uh, Facebook and Instagram. You know, we have a huge audience with yeah. <clears throat> your big audience, the gram, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. We have a huge audience there at the moment, and um, by uh, Alavale, who who are already interested in in unique bottles. You know, that that's why they engage um, so much. So th there's that, and then what what we found is um, uh, a lot of the the, the current. Um, Let's say retailers, uh, they, they don't really look after their um, their SEO particularly well. So there's 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 sort of huge gaps there that we've um, which we've already identified. Uh, so there's, there's a big technical of, challenge uh, here. We're gonna we're gonna beat the big boys with SEO. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not long long term. Look, we're, we're, we're no, obviously no. There, there are some interesting gaps that, that we've already identified that we're that we're going to be going after. Um, so all of that will then drive into a, a, a totally joined up um, email marketing, uh, a bunch of campaigns. So talking to, we, we've already gathered um, close to 100 um, uh, unique individuals, so unique email addresses who, who have engaged with us, who have expressed interest, um, who are ready to go. So we're, we're sort of tailoring our, our experience for those users. Um, uh, so look, we, we're we're quietly confident. We've 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 got a number of different routes, and then we we have some uh, like the next phases of the business. So uh, again, we touched on it earlier in terms of say, um, there's restaurants, there's events, um, sort of the next stages where where we want to get to um, more likely next year, um, assuming that the, the world starts to opening up opening up a little bit more than than it has been this year. Yeah, but I, mean, I think you, you've got an interesting thing, though, because even if it doesn't, even if COVID comes back, even if there's another lockdown, once the there's a sort of uncertainty of where everything is, and then it's like, oh, it's come back, does it become a kind of, oh, it's come back? So therefore, instead of mass panic and furlough and all this stuff, it just becomes more normal to have a certain, a certain amount of uncertainty, and therefore that actually creates certainty, weirdly, is the, is the, the opposite, doesn't it? And therefore, yeah. you get people going, actually, I'm going to buy it. Instead of fearing for everything, they start saying, well, I'm going to buy a bottle of champagne and send it to somebody. Because that's the other thing. Like the whiskey exchange has done really well because of the gifting mm -hmm. process, right? Yeah. And you go there and you buy something I actually wouldn't buy myself. I sent to a friend um, the other day um, because I'm going to spend more as a gift than I probably would on my own sometimes. So therefore, if you can nail that bit, that it becomes part of that gifting process, I would love to send a bottle of you know, unique bespoke champagne that nobody's ever heard of, and it blows your palate. And of course, I'm going to do that rather than go click button, send bottle of brand name because that just yeah. shows like the brand name gift. You, you know, that's like that's like the laziest champagne present you could ever get. Somebody's <laughs> brand name gift. You know, it's fine if if you know that's what you want to do. But if you actually want to put some thought into it, you just don't do that. Yeah, I don't. No, I think I was right. You got at least you've got you've got an audience of one, right? I, I'm with you. <laughs> I mean, well, you you. Also, you sort of wandered into something that we've been exploring with with one of the producers and we we haven't quite nailed um how to fully do this yet but we're, we're exploring um a particularly unique bottle that that um we we have quite a large chunk of the the entire line um that will ever be produced uh, and we 
We're exploring options to totally personalize the Oh, label. my God. You have got this one of 300, like if you buy a McLaren yeah. or, or a Ferrari. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. 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 And it, it can, can have your uh, um, uh, So, yeah, we, we're exploring at the moment. We were hoping to have that in place for launch, but um, we, it's proving, uh, as things always do, a little, it's, it's worth doing, so it's a little bit harder to, to, to fully get there. But even without the, even just that, even just uh, using the limited nature of some of the producers, like you were saying, there's one, there's one barrel, right? That's your lot. How, how, yeah. many, bottles, how many bottles is that? It depends on the barrel size, but but usually they they use 228 liter barrels. So you're oh. looking around about 300 bottles. So, so you, you get one out of 300, two out of 300. I mean, yeah. that's a that's a great way to do it, isn't it? Yeah. To actually have that limited edition type yeah. thing. For, for me, yeah. that's what's what's so exciting about it, and I, and I I buy into that because I love the opportunity to try something that is so unique, so yeah. one off. I think that's really exciting. That's brilliant. Well, I wish you all the best. It's been absolutely fascinating, um, and uh, it'd be great to have you back on. Maybe just as a sort of pop into one of the shows later on in the year um, with how you're getting on. Yeah, well, I'd like, I'd, perhaps next time we, we all get a bottle and we can drink and taste it at the same time. I think that'd be wise. What we should actually do is, because we do have, you know, all 50 subscribers now. It was only, last of the episode, it was one. So this is really good. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's, that's growth that you, you guys could only dream of, right? <laughs> um, we could choose a, a, a couple of other people as well at random and get them on and get, an, um, you know, we could do a little um, LinkedIn thing and see who could, wants to come on and actually taste it with us. Fantastic that's idea. That sounds yeah. like a bit of fun. Yeah. Um, so it's been great to have you on. That's uh, Dan and Peter from sipchampagnes.com uh, with their new business. And we're going to hear more about them in the future. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Dan. Bye. Bye.